Hello everyone, I'm Taylor Bambico. For today's video, we're going to look at the <sighs> High Point C9 Yeet Cannon. Now, as always, before I continue, I'll make sure this firearm is clear. Though, I don't see why I would leave ammo in this firearm. Let's continue, shall we? So, when I first started working the other side of the counter back in 2014, I think I had seen a few of these firearms, handled a couple of them, didn't really like them. The store I worked at didn't really have any for sale. In fact, I don't believe we ever had one until a year or so later, and that was a used firearm that came in, which we did sell about five times. If you know, you know. In fact, it was that same year I got to shoot one of these, and I wasn't impressed. So fast forward eight years, and now I own one. That was difficult to say. Now you might be wondering, why do I have one? Well, for years, like many people I worked with, we always talked bad about these firearms. So I figured, okay, I'm talking so horribly about this firearm, let's at least see if it's as bad as I say it is. And, well, when I first went to the range with this firearm, this is what happened. Yeah, it kept jamming. So I went to YouTube and I was looking how you can make this fire more reliable. One thing you do is you take a pair of needle nose pliers, you flare out the feed lips on the magazine to prevent the cartridge from nose diving in the chamber. Next thing I saw you would do is you would disassemble the firearm, you would remove the paint from the feed ramp and polish that a bit. I did that and I was still having issues. I did read the manual for this firearm and it does state that any Modifications done to the firearm, not done by the factory, actually voids the warranty. Now, of course, after shooting 600 rounds, and yes, for this firearm, I was keeping track of how many rounds I was shooting through it to see when the gun would actually begin to function correctly. So by 600 rounds, the gun did begin to cycle much better. Now I bring up round count because when I worked the other side of the counter, I always told people that generally firearms have about a 500 to 1,000 round break-in. Now with other modern striker fire pistols like a Glock 19 or even an M&P or a H&K or Sig Sauer pistol, for the most part, out of the box, they're good to go. Though I do recommend shooting it at least 500 rounds so you become familiar with it. Anyway, back to the high point. Overall, does the gun work? 
It works after you break it in a significant amount. And while I realize the bullet leaving the barrel of a high point C9 will hit the target just as hard as a bullet leaving the barrel of an MP9, the MP9 is a far more reliable pistol. Now, while you might be saying it's not really fair to compare the reliability of a $250 pistol to a $630 pistol, when it comes to your life, it shouldn't be fair. For a little bit more, you could get a Taurus pistol or save up a little more and get a Ruger or a Smith & Wesson pistol. Now, one argument I've heard about the high point is, oh, they're American-made. Well, so is Ruger, so is Smith & Wesson. And back on the subject of round count, the fact that it took about 600 rounds to get this gun to where it wouldn't have any cycling issues, little scary. And the reason I say that is because a lot of people buy a firearm and don't go shoot it. And I know that because there's a lot of times when I was on the other side of the counter, customers would come in and sell us a firearm they bought from us, they never shot it. They just thought it wanted it and they came back and sold it to the store. That is more common than you might think. So one thing I would say is if you're going to buy a high point pistol, you got to go out and you got to shoot it. Now another video I was watching on a high point pistol, the individual was saying how a good thing, I'm not sure if it's really a good thing, the high point pistol will teach you how to clear malfunctions. Now when it came to clearing a malfunction on this firearm, it wasn't as simple as racking the slide as when I had actually that one malfunction I caught on camera with the Nintendo Zapper Glock 17L. <laughs> Relatively simple, not in the case with this firearm. So whenever this gun jammed, I had to drop the magazine, rack the slide numerous times, mind you. In fact, there were some times I actually had to lock the slide back and just shake the gun. Another argument about the high point is if you kind of want to learn how to take firearms apart, the high point is a good pistol to learn on. I don't like how these magazines don't always seat properly either. So take this pistol apart, you lock the slide to the rear and you drift a roll pin out. I don't know why High Point hasn't changed that to a solid pin yet. There's probably a reason which I should have looked into, but I didn't. First time I took this apart, I moved wrong and then components were just falling out of the frame. Thankfully, YouTube came to the rescue and had a video of how to reassemble this firearm completely. So over the time period I was shooting this firearm, I can't say my views on the pistol changed compared to what were referred to as the Saturday Night Specials, the really inexpensive guns like the Brycos and the Jennings pistols. I can't say it's the absolute worst gun I've ever handled. At least after it did break in, the gun did cycle. I still don't really recommend this firearm. If it's all you can afford, maybe, but you're gonna have to shoot it a lot to get it to where it'll work. Unless I said you got one that worked fine out of the box. I mean, it is American made, I'll give it that, but it's definitely not a gun I would recommend. Now, that being said, will I get rid of this firearm? Probably not. Why? Because it's a firearm and I like firearms. I just see no other reason than that. For me, it'd be the same reason if I were to own a Taurus pistol. Yeah, it may not be the best firearm in the world, but it's still a firearm and I can own it. Do I really need any other reason to say why I have this pistol than because I want it? No. And that's really what it should be when it comes down to firearms. I mean, think about it. Why else would I have a pink Ruger LCP pistol? And yes, there's definitely a video coming up with this little pistol. Another thing about the threaded barrel, when High Point was offering name suggestions for this pistol, I remember there was talk of they should do a suppressor and call it the Eater Discreter. Now, I'm sure the suppressor would work, but considering the price of what that suppressor would cost on top of the $200 tax you pay with the suppressor, I don't know if it'd be worth it. Another thing about the high point pistol, finding a holster for it. One day a customer came in looking for a holster for this particular firearm. One of the guys I was working with is actually helping him. He turns to me and asks, what is the best holster for a high point? I cut him off right then and there because I knew what gun he's looking for. And I say to him, Uncle Mike size 15. And he's like, you've done this a few times, haven't you? Yes. I mean, it works, but really? I can get the snap on there real quick. Yeah. Okay. So here's a little anecdote for you. When High Point decided they were going to name the pistol the Yeet Cannon, Aero Precision was also offering a lower with Yeet Cannon on it as well. One day when I was behind the counter, I get a call from someone and they were wanting to know if we had any of the Yeet Cannons in stock just yet. And I told them, unfortunately, the lower receivers from Air Position have not arrived just yet. This person says, no, no, I'm talking about the high point. 
the first thing I think, not say, but the first thing I think is, oh, you're serious. First thing I told him was, or should just say, first thing I said to him over the phone, unfortunately, we have not seen those pistols just yet. I'm not sure when we're getting them in either. I had to hold my laughter back because I was surprised anyone really wanted one. Interesting twist of fate, because now I own one myself. So now, as I did say in my Luger PO8 video about how this would be the trophy gun of World War III because the PO8 Luger was the trophy gun of World War II, you'd be surprised, or maybe you wouldn't be, how many times customers would come into the store I worked at asking for a magazine for their 9mm Luger. I did also hear that on, I think it was one of the earliest videos, uh, earliest gun gripe videos Iraq Veteran 8888 did. They were talking about a high point C9 in 9mm Luger, not a P08 Luger. But yes, I did have that on a couple occasions, and I'm like, the P08 Luger? And they had no idea. Oh, it's just a 9mm Luger. They read on the slide 9mm mm Luger. How can I not say that? So, as I said, World War II trophy gun, World War III trophy gun. Though, I already own one, so I wouldn't want to pick one up. I don't know if I want to get another one. I see no reason to it. I guess there was going to be a Gen 2 of the Yeet Cannon. I don't know. I really don't know if I'll get one. I really don't at this time. The thing about these firearms, though, with the magazines, this is a 10-round magazine. This is used in the High Point 995 carbine. For the most part, well, that's interesting. While I was shooting this firearm with this magazine, the slide didn't lock back. Now it's locking back. Interesting. Well, anyway, that was my video on the High Point C9 Yeet Cannon. Speaking of which, Yeet! Well, as I was saying, that was my video on the High Point C9 Yeet Cannon. If you enjoyed it, remember to subscribe if you haven't already. Click that bell icon to notify when I upload new content. Leave any comments you have in the section below, and have a good day. See ya! I'll be honest with you, that was actually pretty fun to throw the High Point Yeet Cannon.